Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be going over a few more details of what I've done to these displays so far to get them ready to display uh, numerical data instead of the weird um, you know toner low insert key please wait uh, alpha data. So not sure how much I went over this in my last video and I don't care to review it so I'm just going to show you a couple things. So if you do check out my previous video, you'll see that I, uh, I've i aided these now. I'm going to be using six of them for a clock, and then two for possibly a uh, weather station slash temperature gauge um, that hopefully I can change the colors on, but we'll touch on that in just a minute. But anyway, so I, in the previous video I tore one of these down, showed you the internals of it, showed you kind of what I had to do. Check that out if you haven't seen it already and want to know more about these IEE um, one plane displays. But when these came to me, they came with this as the insert, and this is what displays the text. And let's see if we can I'm gonna hold this over a white background so you can see it better. Hopefully, this will show up on camera. This camera is really crappy, but it's, I could zoom in a little bit. Where's my other one? Couldn't. So, anyway, uh, this is a bunch of. Uh, information which it used to display. I wanted it to display uh, digits. So what I first did is I scanned this and then I edited it out to, I did a couple things, I made a mask over it, put the digits roughly where they should go. I lined them up with the text that was on here. Um, I made the digits as big as the largest text was and I just placed them where I thought they should go. Then I made this bottom layer completely black, and then I put the digits on top and made it one layer. And then this is what I came up with. This is just a piece of paper that I printed on. Um, some of the digits are white, and some of them I cut out. And this was just a test um, to see if my digits were in the right place and um, mainly the zero. The zero was the tricky one because uh, the ready indicator is very tiny so it was hard to, to place that. So this was just a test to see if the light shined through where it was supposed to. Uh, the next thing I did was I then printed that on transparency. So these are transparent digits uh, with a black background and um, once again, this was just a more finalized version. The issue, w I would have just printed them straight on transparency as they were here. Uh, the issue with this, however, is that um, the transparency, although it looks black, it allows a lot of light through. And I'm not sure if it was a limitation of my file. My file was fairly ro low resolution that I made of this, but the, uh, and it looks, it looks good when you're looking at it right here. But once you get close to it or project something through it, um, the the uh, the digits are they have a fine grain on them, and it doesn't look good on the display. So what I did then is I sent this to uh, I sent I made a, a higher resolution file, a very very high resolution file of uh, my mask. Once I I made a ton of edits to this, and I don't have many of them here. Uh, but I, I changed these digits, you know, a couple pixels at a time to put them exactly where I wanted them so that all the numbers were centered in the displays. So once that was done, I made a higher resolution image. I then sent that off to a company who a friend told me about. Um, and they print, uh, they don't print, they do film. And they make gobos, I believe they're called. Um, they do stuff for projection. Uh, whether it's slides or these gobos, which I wish I could give you more information about. Um, I believe the company was named Gamma Tech. Uh, I will look that up and put it in the description for anyone watching this who's trying to do the same thing. Uh, it was a fairly reasonable price, and here's what he sent me. He sent me 35 millimeter film slides with my design printed on them. Now the cool part about this is resolution is extremely high, the digits look very very good, 
and it's pitch black, no light gets through there, and that's the advantage of this, uh, this design. Uh, unfortunately, um, he sent me, I, I gave him the measurements that I needed, which worked fine on the transparency. I'm not sure what happened, but they weren't printed uh, exactly to the right dimensions, they're a little bit too, too large for this. Um, but uh, I just got these in today, and I've talked to him, it sounds like he's going to take care of me. So. Um, like I said, so far I'd recommend this guy, even with the, the slight error, not too big of a deal, and it sounds like he's, like I said, he sounds like he's going to, you know, do right by me. So, looking forward to that. Uh, besides that, I am very pleased with these films, um, pretty much exactly what I needed, just unfortunately not the exact size. Okay, so, lastly, I bought it, uh, I didn't know how I was going to control the digits on these displays at first. At first I thought I was going to use a Nixie... Uh, clock driver because it can control 10 filaments um, and there's a fairly cheap one for around $20 uh, for six digits and I believe it was like 15 for for four digits um, there would be a lot of related wiring um, I wasn't too the, the information I found on this product was very limited I couldn't fully understand what it all came with or what it didn't come with what I would need um, but during that exercise, I uh, ordered a ton of LEDs, and if you've been following my Instagram, you saw these black light purple ones. Um, so I bought these, and I bought another very bizarre color, which I know I touched on in my previous video. It's like a uh, light yellow green, really bizarre looking. It's kind of futuristic, kind of really old fashioned, kind of what I'm going with for this clock. I want it to look like uh, kind of like cyberpunk um, is kind of the, the look I'm going to go for. Um, but anyway, bought a ton of LEDs, and I'm going to go over uh, what I did with these LEDs so far, and then my future plan for LEDs. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have something down here to show you, but that's all right. So, as they arrived, they are just clear 5 millimeter LEDs. I also will show you this. This is the, oh man, what number is this? I think this is a, a number 330 incandescent bulb and it is also five millimeters so technically speaking these five millimeter LEDs should work well and they do uh, but this one came in clear the problem with the clear that I found out uh, which I should have known because I've worked with LEDs before is that of course they shine a fairly you know a round beam and then it's it's a solid color in the round beam and then it kind of diffuses outwards because it's focused obviously with with having a lens on it uh, that did not it looked pretty good in person in all honesty uh, on inside the display it looked fairly decent in pictures it looked absolutely horrible which once again if you're following my Instagram that is sexual uh, s-e-x-z-u-a-l underscore hot dog I'll post a link in my description or something if you really want to check that out um, you've seen the pictures of these like I said look decent in person uh, looked horrible in pictures, but like I said, it, uh, it was because of how this focused the beam. Um, it, the beam was mostly centered on uh, the center of the image, and then it kind of diffused outwards, so not the best. So what I experimented with is I frosted my own, and I just did this with uh, like a scotch bright pad. First I did some sandpaper, then I did a scotch bright pad to kind of make it all even. This helped. Um, Definitely noticeable, still not great, but noticeable. Then what I did is I cut the tip off. Uh, I cut the tip off and it's frosted. I also did another one which I don't have in front of me that I made this very, very clear. Uh, I polished it to clear. The frosted with the cut tip is the way to go for me, I believe. Uh, it had the best light pattern. Um, it was very, very spread, and so it looked great. So this is what I'm going to end up going with, potentially. Here's the next thing. That clock driver, that Nixie clock driver, was extremely confusing to me. I, like I said, didn't understand what it came with, what it didn't come with, um, what else I would need. Not in too much of a rush to do this, but at the same time, I kind of am. So, what I thought is, hey, why not use serial addressable LEDs, RGB LEDs? I'm not really into RGB, it's kind of flashy for my taste, but the good news is I can. I probably won't do like crazy stupid rainbow effects, sorry if you enjoy that kind of thing, um, but I can choose any color I want, 
I can potentially even choose, uh, you know, a different color for the seconds digits and then, you know, a single color for the other two. Uh, the good news is I can pretty much do whatever I want. And because they're serial addressable, um, it's one, you know, it's three wires total per LED, one in, one out um, for data and then power. Uh, so I bought a, man, what is it called? It's called a Node M. SU, NDU, something, MN, whatever. Uh, it's the Wi Fi enabled Arduino. And I'm, I have that. I don't have it here um, with me, in front of me. But uh, I bought that and I have 75 serial addressable LEDs coming my way. So that's the plan for the time being is to make it Arduino based with serial addressable RGB LEDs should simplify the wiring more or less. I'm not sure if I want to do a printed circuit board uh, for the LEDs or just mount them in there and hand wire them, but uh, suggestions are welcome. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, thanks for sticking around. If you were able to stick around through my ramblings this entire time, congratulations. You deserve a thumbs up. Don't give me one. Um, and until next time, Check out my Instagram. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description, and uh, we'll catch you then. Take care, guys.